This is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Lynn. Hello. Hi, Kristen. <clears throat> so for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Oh, yeah. I, my name is Lynn Zorwin. I'm currently based in New Zealand, Wellington, and I'm currently working in the Dynamics 365 and Bar Platform area. Very cool. I, I love that city. I, for, for 12 years, I was living in Seattle, and Wellington is a lot like Seattle. Yeah, it's always yeah, like same rainy. <laughs> yeah, well, the weather-wise, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it just has that same vibe. Like, there's a coffee place in every corner. Mm, yeah. It's, uh, it's a very walkable, interesting, vibrant city. It's a re really big deal, um, the coffee culture in Wellington. is. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> And of course, um, home of Weta and all that good fun. So, well, good times. So, um, so what kind of stuff are you focusing on? What's what? So, your your Dynamics three six five or Power Platform MVP. But what's yes. kind of your focus? So, my main focus is as I background is Dynamics CRM and that came Dynamics three six five when Bob Platform came. Uh, main focus is still in the model driven app part of the Dynamics uh, Bar apps. Mm -hmm. And we also do a lot of uh, Bar Automate cloud flows to do the backend process. So my main focus is if, if in terms of the Bar platform, my focus is more on the more driven apps and the cloud flows and occasionally um, Bar pages. That's interesting. How long have you been working with Dynamics 365, the, the CRM platform? Well, as long as my career started back in like last 12, 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. So back then it was Dynamics CRM. Yeah. Like I started my career with uh, CRM 4.0 days, like really, really old. Um, I, I don't have a lot of experience with it. I, well, I left Microsoft in 2009, went to a little startup or little ISV, and that was my first experience all dynamics crm and uh, and so it was very automated like our website you would breathe on it and we were picking up those signals and doing things with it um and then of course i've gone companies kind of back and forth between dynamics and salesforce um but i know that it's well i understand uh that it's a very rapidly growing space yet again so it, yes it's, i mean a lot of that i think has to do with the power platform a lot of the cross integrations between tools yes indeed it's a really growing market and there's a lot of demand especially in the new zealand we are always looking for people and during the lockdown uh, we can't bring in people from overseas and the demand is really high <clears throat> yeah well that's I, I've tried to convince my wife that we need to go live for a year or two in in new zealand because oh. i've been many times i love it down there and uh, I've hiked all over both islands. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I absolutely love it. I've had friends that have done like summertime. They went down and rented like a camper and just drove the country and different experiences. I'd love to do that. Yeah, you should totally try it out. There are a lot of great hiking areas and a lot of great treks. How, how difficult is it for somebody to, you know, international to, to come down and work out of New Zealand? I know this is a little bit of a sidetrack, but... I've always yeah. been interested, like, how, like I, I don't know if you if you pull in a lot of uh, of expats in to 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 work and what that process is like. Um, definitely, it's uh, uh, now that the border is starting to open up, it's going to be a lot easier, and especially for the countries who has the uh, like holiday work visa. Um, mm -hmm. privileged in New Zealand they are like way easier they just come in and then just start working for a couple of years kind of thing but for those who requires uh, to the company to sponsor the work visa it's a little bit um, tricky situation and because there's a longer process the company has to adv advertise the ads 
and yeah. they need to prove the government that they cannot get the required resource locally and then they have to sponsor it so it's a little bit of a lengthy process i always wondered how that especially now that so many organizations uh, have made the decision to go you know partially or entirely virtual um what happens there i mean because you could technically pick up employees anywhere in the world you know they'd have to work you know time shift a little bit uh, to uh to fit in with the hours but i mean because my my thought was always the opposite like i always thought you know i could work anywhere in the world i've been working remote for 12 years now 13 years a uh, long time more than a decade i could be anywhere and if i lived in new zealand i just have to be up at weird hours to uh to be in all of the meetings yeah the <laughs> I, right and that's tough but that's not every day you can build your schedule around that um it's tougher for me and i have grandkids now and so it's kind of difficult to move to the other side of the planet when you've got grandkids <laughs> you know but uh, yeah yeah <laughs> that, that time zone is the only tricky part where it's really eastern part of the, the whole world and uh, not really aligned with much with the other time zones the closest is australia which is two hour later than us <clears throat> yeah yeah it's always uh when i when i'm doing sessions uh for you know apac and and realizing that even the variety there people in perth people out of auckland and wellington and people out of singapore and just matt finding a time that'll work for everybody just and then it, it's it just never really aligns for uh especially my team is all on the east coast of the u.s they're two hours ahead of me and yeah. so i do an apac call and i try to pull people from our new jersey office for example in on those calls and they complain that i'm making them jump on a call at 9 p.m 10 p.m at night <laughs> yeah but uh yeah well fun well what was your uh so tell me about your journey to becoming mvp this is your is this your third yes yes this like as of last three days ago is my yes. third <laughs> yep. yeah um so my journey started back in let's say last 10 years mm -hmm. since i started working in like crm and when i did the development as you know we all developers we do google when we don't know we just walk that way and yep. i found a lot of my issues solved by those people in the forums and some of the problems by in the blog posts. And <clears throat> since then I was inspired to start contributing in the area. So if I can find something in the online, I try to solve out the problem by myself and then I try to blog it so that I remind myself if I enter, encounter this problem in the future. And eventually I also started answering questions in the forums back then it was msdn forum mm -hmm. and it was really good and uh, but eventually it's just starting to really get busy in the singapore uh, and i just happened to do it like on and off not routinely and then i since i migrate to new zealand i just want to restart it again and mm -hmm. then i just uh, participated in the user group forums, uh, <clears throat> meetups in the Wellington, and also just restarted the blog. And then I just do, I do it more consistently this time. Yeah. And also uh, but participated in the forums. And one day, and trust from um, Australia, he reached out to me, hey, Lynn, um, I really like your, you're really active in the community doing these contributions. Would you want to be nominated as an MVP. So that's that was the time that I was contributing for started my contribution for three, four months. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I, I don't think I have enough content to submit if I were to show for my last 12 months on contribution. So can you give me a few more months? And so and that was around January, February, and then he reached out to me again. I'll, I'll reach out to him on May, June. Okay, now I'm not ready. I think I'm ready to do the submission. And then after submission time, there were some 
um, same time like this that a renewal happens. So I had to wait for a renewal around. And then I think it's August, I was called her MVP Wars. For folks that don't know too, I mean, the submission process. So it's looking back over the past year of activities. And so sometimes like, uh, and, and uh, you know, when you get submitted and, and especially if Microsoft likes you, they'll be like, it's not quite, you know, not for this cycle, but we like you and, and, it, you know, let's, we'll consider you again for the next round. And there's some people that, you know, w wait a while. I always talk about, it. I have a good friend who's a, an MVP and an RD now, and, and he had gone through that cycle and been considered um, a number of times. And finally, he just said, you know, look, I'm, the, the amount of effort, he owns his own business, is very busy, very successful. And the amount of time that he was taking to collect all of that work and, and, and compile all of that, he's like, it's never going to happen for me. <laughs> I'm not, just forget about it. I'm just, I'm happy doing this stuff, but I don't have time for this activity. And then he got it, uh, you know, and then he was in. Now he has to do it to renew, <laughs> but it's just once <laughs> a year, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it can be, depending on the level of contribution, you know, and what you're collecting and building, it's not a small task to go and put all that together and organize. What did I work on the last year? Yeah. So it's more like time sheeting, filling right. time sheets. <laughs> if I do regularly, um, I don't feel it's, it's okay. But if I do it at the end of the year and I, I have to re recollect or look at through my all blog posts and all my activities and user group speeches and like, oh, it's... Uh... <laughs> I know. Well, so I tell this advice like for you, Lynn, and it's like, but I, so I started years ago uh, when I was working for another software company and and uh, I was writing most of the marketing material and I'd have salespeople like, hey, didn't you write an article about that? Or didn't you do a, a webinar on that topic? And I'm like, yeah, let me compile it. So I did an internal newsletter on a monthly basis of everything that I did the prior month and would send it to the sales folks. And then I just like, why don't I just put this out on my blog? And so I've been for years, I have what my, I call my, my monthly so I've got like the, I just published on the first of every month, I do a like June, 2022 content wrap up. And then I, I take the time. It's, it takes the time to compile that article once a month of all of those activities, all of the links. And then I put the kind of the narrative, the story around it. Hey, here's what I was working on. Here's the event that I went to. Here's the webinar that I did. And then all of those links and publish that out. So what I need to get better at, and I don't know what your process is, but is adding that now into the tool on a regular basis, not <laughs> waiting for the end of year, yeah, until the renewal process, because <laughs> that's that's a pain where everybody is trying to go and add their contributions all in the month of March, all in the last week. <laughs> yeah, sometimes Before, the, yeah. even the site is down. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, but anyways, I the other thing is like, um, so I know that there's a, there's a lot of people that have questions about getting started. You just talked about a perfect example of starting in the forums and then starting to expand on maybe what you shared in in a forum in a blog post. So what was your process? I mean, did you were you like set aside time every day to go in and answer questions, or what did that look like? Yeah, for me. <clears throat> the blogging, I put some blog my calendar in one of the weekends. Mm -hmm. So I started for five hour blog for let's say Saturday first. So that I, if something comes up on Saturday, I can move it to Sunday. Um, for forums, I usually do it at, during the night, like half, blog half an hour each day, mm -hmm. go through the, all the new questions and re reply. The response to my previous questions so it's a bit of uh blocking your personal calendar yeah well that's and again that's i i think that the the only way to do it to be consistent block yep. out the block out the time and 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 it may be that all you're doing is going in and um i always remind people it's not just about what you're answering but 
recognizing when somebody else has a good response and commenting and liking it and doing that thing. So, so that maybe you get other notifications that there's follow-up questions on that topic. Um, but recognizing others is a big piece of that as well. Yeah, and indeed, uh, throughout the whole process, you're not just answering the questions. You also learn from other people's problems. And also, same as um, what you mentioned, you also learn from other contributors. So you go to the new question, you see someone answer it, and you say, oh, that's quite a good answer. Like, I've never, I wouldn't have never thought about it. So this, not just contributing, it's also the learning process. That's why I love forums. That's why I like panels um, is because even though you may have the correct answer for that, somebody else brings in a different perspective from a different industry mm -hmm. or a different novel approach that you're like, you know, I never thought of it that way. And, you know, and, and, and so it's, it's great to have those other insights. And if you are blogging, I mean, you could... I mean, a lot of us, we're, we're, we have our regular jobs. It, it, we're not just blogging all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, I don't think there's any shortage of topics that are out there. If you did nothing more than go and collect good answers from other people, give the attributions, recognize the people that gave those answers, which is always key. It's, hey, you want a secret to growing your blog is make sure that you're properly citing the work of others. You always want to do that. Um, but, uh, and then, and, you know, then putting together your thoughts around the topics. I mean, you, I could go and blog once a day and find interesting technical problems that, uh, you know, I have something to add to and, you know, it, it build up the content. And that's a great way if for people that are looking for ways to start, just go and find common problems that you've run into that you have some experience with, but pull in the work of others as well. You'll grow a lot faster. Yeah, that, that's also one of my <clears throat> um, source of the blog topics back in the days when I do forum answers. So when I get run out of all these problems that I encounter at my projects and my work, I can see all those people's questions and answer them. And then I blog about it and yep. reference to those blog threads, uh, yep. forum threads, yeah. Well, that's, uh, yeah, that's a, it's a great point because that a lot of people just like, well, what do I write about? What do I talk about? What mm -hmm. are the experience? And, um, you know, sometimes when I'm doing, I, I do uh, Microsoft 365 AMA. So M365 AMA is we do these regular basis with a group of us. I've got, uh, I don't know if you know, uh, Kirsty McGrath out of uh, Melbourne, uh, an MVP uh, it participates in, in these as well. And, uh, we were just recording earlier this week and some of them and a couple of the responses like I have no experience with that. Mm. And so I'm listening to them share their their feedback on that. And then I found I did. I said, oh, you know, hey, this might also work to help solve that. And so having just that interaction sometimes sparks another thought, another idea of, hey, I have had something experience that's relevant to solving this problem that, you know, that could help there. But yeah. Well, that's why I'm in collaboration technology because I love <laughs> that kind of collaboration. collaboration. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, then uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, one, great to meet you. I hope to get down in your neck of the woods sometime soon and uh, maybe this year, but definitely next year I'll be back down your way. But for oh, folks yeah. who want to find out more about you or get in touch with you, what are the best ways to reach you? Where are you most active in the social platforms? Um, I'm equally active in both LinkedIn and Twitter. So it's my full name, Lin Zowin, L-I-W-N-Z-A-W-W-I-N. So this is the same as for my Twitter handle. Excellent. Of course, I'll have the links within the, uh, the YouTube and within the blog and podcast. So Lynn, really appreciate you taking the time today. It's great meeting you and uh, have a great weekend. Th I should have put at the, at the beginning. This is your weekend. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's already it's like Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday 10 a.m. <laughs> Dedicated. All right. To community. Excellent. No, thanks for doing that. And uh, uh, appreciate thanks it. For, yeah. I'm really glad to be on the show. Wow. Wow.